Ladies and gentlemen, this is extremely, extremely interesting, and it's something that I've been talking about for a long time. Axios, trusted media hits new crisis low. Well, of course it does. Everything has been orange man bad. Oh my God, the sky is falling. He worked with Russia. He tried to strong arm Zelensky. He deserved to be impeached because of an ellipsis. Facebook ads swung 2016. Debbie Wasserman Schultz was forced to resign because Putin wanted to embarrass Clinton. These are the tinfoil hat fantasies that they pushed. Hey, there, there are message boards that unfortunately um, a great many conservatives have been deceived by. But the difference is that media legitimizes and amplifies the absurd, nonsensical, irrational, tinfoil hat fantasies of the establishment. So, you have John Brennan and James Comey and Clapper and McCabe and all of these intelligence operatives and everyone on CNN and MSNBC and the Washington Post and the New York Times and Esquire and Vanity Fair and the New Yorker and, and the Daily Beast and every single subsidiary publication. It's like this, the, the push to paint Trump as this monster, and there were some missteps. So he got them, he continued to get them riled up. He took a, a baseball bat and just bashed this hornet's nest every day on Twitter, which got them even more riled up and, and in a frenzy, in this hysterical, maniacal, fanatical, you know, this this kind of trance they got into this this paran these paranoid delusions pertaining to Trump everything was his fault the pandemic was 100% his fault it wasn't the governors of New York or New Jersey or Illinois or California or anywhere else it was 100% his fault despite the fact that the New York Times according to the New York Times the worst outcomes take place within Democratic-run states. That's according to the New York Times statistics. How on earth is that Trump's fault? Like I said, there were missteps during President Trump's administration that we have to learn from. The accomplishments were profound. But see, media, well, we'll get to this. Trust in media hits new low. So they're really duplicitous, disingenuous. Many of them are hypocrites. And many, almost all the journalists today are extensions of the Democratic Party in some way or another. They're activists. In 2000, and here's, here's the real reason why nobody trusts media. The CNN, MSNBC, the, the people gravitate nowadays towards news that, that bolsters their biases. People listen to voices that simply, you know, bolster or you know elevate or justify their existing beliefs that's true for this channel also people aren't going to listen to me because they disagree with me it's true to an extent because i'm going to give like rational and sober and thoughtful critique i've been i've been giving some thoughtful critique of president trump's administration because i want what he achieved to live on I want peace between North and South Korea. I want the Abraham Accords, Accords uh, peace between Israel, UAE, Bahrain, um, Morocco, economic deals between Serbia and Kosovo. I want those things. I want a reversal of U.S. foreign policy. Which the, the, I, want, I want a president to oppose the Lincoln Project, which is not what we have with Biden. But here, Media Trust hits new low. Hit subscribe right now. Get this segment viral. The best thing you could do, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to support my voice long term, my Patreon is below in the pinned comment and description. Your support is greatly appreciated. And to my new Patreons, thank you. I do appreciate your support greatly. Thank you so much. And... We're on our way to 200,000 subscribers. Media trust hits new low. Axios, this is today. Trust in traditional media has declined to an all-time low, and many news professionals are determined to do something about it. Well, okay. Why it matters. Faith in society, central institutions. Okay, again, this is why, this is, <laughs> even in, the, in an article talking about why nobody trusts media, they come up with these absurd, outlandish, like tenants or precepts or 
Faith in society, central institutions, especially in government and media, is the glue that holds society together. No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> Daniel Ellsberg, um, in the Pentagon Papers, decades back, shed light into the inner workings of government. And um, you, you could look, I mean, there was uh, yellow journalism back in the uh, late 1800s that got us into the Spanish-American War. I mean, you can, you can look, I mean, there were, okay, the prevailing mentality from George Orwell's, George Orwell's 1984 is that oftentimes government should not be trusted. I mean, you could, you could even look at, um, who wrote Leviathan? Thomas Hobbes. There's a contract. People have known. There's a contract. You, you, you're living within a state or a government because you want protection. Um, there's, there's, there's a mutual understanding, so you're going to give up some rights in order to have... I mean, it, it, I can go in... We can talk about the nature of government and whether or not people have always trusted government. We know now from Edward Snowden, from Julian Assange, who should be free. Both of them should be free, especially Julian Assange. So President Trump, he dropped the ball on that. Speaking of trust in government, Trump was a, a great president in terms of accomplishments, but he should, have, he should have pardoned Julian Assange. And they said, well, there will be, probably be a special counsel. But see, the thing is, it starts off... You know, so they probably said, you know, if you pardon Assange, you know, the whole system's going to go after you even with even greater uh, emphasis. But here, why it matters, faith in society, central institutions, especially in government and the media, is the glue that holds society together. No, families are the glue. Friends, families, relationships, religion, or, or a belief in atheism or whatever. I mean, things that... Things that um, inspire people to do good deeds your your cultural um your your your, your your ethnicity your culture your values your friends your family your traditions what you know your celebrations your religious beliefs or celebrations or the food you eat I mean, these are the things that hold society together. Also, the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, not faith in our central institutions, but see, that we can go on forever. You're supposed to hold these institutions accountable. You're not supposed to revere them. And by the way, this is an article talking about, so Trump has won this battle with media. He's told the world it's completely, they just, they just, they have their own interests. They're not reporting on the news. They're reporting on a, a, a narrative, a spin, a marketing, a public relations narrative. Trump was bad, Biden's good, and that's it. And everybody knows that even if you agree, even if you like Biden, you know the media is completely beholden to the Democratic Party. You know that, and you think that's a good thing. Because you think it's reality. You think, re in many cases, what Democrats and and liberals and and people on the left, what they say, what they say is, well, well, media, me, most of media reinforces our belief system, so we must be right. That must be the objective reality. <laughs> That's wrong. Trump didn't work with Russia. That was a tinfoil hat fantasy. But here, that glue was visibly dissolving a decade ago, and now, for many millions of Americans, disappeared entirely. Yeah, because, for example, in two thousand. It was Gore, Bush Gore, and we didn't know who was going to be president. And you can, you, like Peter Jennings, everybody, David Brinkley, nobody cared. Ted Koppel, nobody cared. Nobody really cared who won. In 2000, 20, year, 20 years ago, the media did not care who won. They had no, uh, no concern whether or not Bush or Gore would eventually be president. I mean, they didn't have an allegiance either way. They had no dog in the fight. They didn't care. 
by the numbers. For the first time ever, fewer than half of all Americans have trust in traditional media. Yeah, <laughs> that's according to, uh, according to data from Edelman's annual trust barometer shared exclusively with Axios. Well, I mean, you talk about Axios' interesting publication. Jonathan Swan completely ambushed President Trump in, in an interview, blaming him for the per capita rates. And didn't, didn't acknowledge or address, and President, Tr- President Trump should have told him, hey, the highest per capita rates are in Democratic-run states, according to the New York Times statistics. New Jersey, and God bless the people of New Jersey and New York, two of the great, only the best people in New Jersey and New York. Really, I've only met only the most amazing people in New Jersey and New York. But Phil Murphy and Andrew Cuomo were the, are the worst governors of all time, two of the worst governors. New Jersey alone leads the country in unemployment rate and per capita rate. How is that Trump's fault? New York is the epicenter of the pandemic. According to New York Times statistics, you can go and see the New York Times statistics. So how is that Trump's fault? But see, again, Andrew Cuomo has a book on leadership lessons that he's going to give to people from the pandemic, what he's learned. He sent people, he sent elderly, infected elderly people into old age homes, elderly homes, how many lives lost? I mean, he gets away with everything. There's no media does not media covers up, suppresses thought, censors and sweeps anything detrimental to Democrats under the rug, and then they and then they say, "Wow, you know, nobody trusts us." Yeah, because we all know what you're doing. <laughs> you have they wanted a specific outcome on everything. And everything was Trump's fault. You can't have everything Trump's fault and nothing Andrew Cuomo or Phil Murphy's fault or Newsom. You can't, you, that can't, that's not logical. There's also something called hypocrisy. People don't listen to hypocrites. If you say believe, believe, but then you don't believe with Biden when he's accused by Tara Reid, you're a hypocrite. Also, there's a distortion in, re- in revisionist hist- there's a revisionist history from AOC, for example. She used the phrase never again in reference to, uh, we know what it, it is, it's in reference to, we can't talk about it on YouTube. But Yad Vashem in Jerusalem condemned her remarks and refuted exactly what she said. Say, basically telling her, learn more about the topic and said, no, that's not accurate. But see, again, we're so far removed from all the horrors of the past. We're so far removed. They're even comparing events uh, at the Capitol, which I condemn. Those five people should be alive. They're comparing those events to 20 years ago in September. Again, I can't even really talk about that. But this is where the Helsinki Helsinki conference was compared to Pearl Harbor. These people, the, the, the horrible tragedies and like... Events of the past, like this generation is so far removed that you have journalists now and you have politicians making the most absurd correlations using only hyperbole, only, uh, you know, this distorted revisionist. Arnold Schwarzenegger did the same thing, by the way. Comparing the Capitol, what happened in the Capitol, which I condemn, to an event a specific event that has no comparison to what took place. But here, 56% of Americans agree with the statement that journalists and reporters are purposely trying to mislead people by saying they were they they know saying things they know are false and and gross exaggerations. So, 56% of Americans agree with Trump. That's exactly what he was saying. 58% think that most news organizations are more concerned with supporting an ideology or political opposition than with informing the public. That is 100% true. See, before there was only one Fox News, and then there was media. Now there's MSNBC, CNN, The Washington Post, The New York Times, every pretty much every, even the AP and Reuters now, you're seeing a, a huge shift to the left. So you had one Fox News that was going after President Obama. Every other outlet either treated him fairly or tried to elevate everything he did or at least cover up any scandal or controversy. Where Fox was treating him unfairly, most of media was like either treating him correctly or fairly or actively suppressing and covering up any scandal detrimental to a Democrat. Now you have 
the equivalent of Fox News on the left of like pretty much everyone is the equivalent, the liberal equivalent or the left-leaning equivalent of Fox. You don't have objective. There's no, there is no objective media. There, there are two different opposing camps or sides and Democrats have far more, like you can't, look, even Hollywood, like they have every single possible advantage and they barely achieved, you know, success. They lost in 2016. Why? People didn't trust media then, but the media just, you know, President Trump helped them achieve this, but the media was able to wrestle control away for the Democratic Party. There's no, Democrats didn't win because of their ideas. They won because President Trump uh, had to endure 92% negative media coverage. And so that's why you should watch these channels, like this channel in particular, tell your friends, subscribe, your, your favorite YouTube channel, support the voices that you, uh, that you find interesting and that are, that are independent. Um, this, I'm not affiliated with any organization. I'm completely independent. I used to be the biggest Bernie Sanders booster on the internet, according to the Huffington Post. I used to be the unofficial scribe of Sanders' most hardcore voters, according to the Washington Post. Now I, I support President Trump, but I'm not a Republican, so we can, we can go on forever here. When Edelman pre-polled Americans uh, after the election, the, uh, the numbers had deteriorated even further. 57% of Democrats trusting the media and only 18% of Republicans. You don't even get a vast majority of Democrats. Even Democrats know. Because <laughs> you're not, like, you start, you're starting off with, like, why it matters, Axios. Faith in society, central institutions. No, no, but media, okay. Society, central institutions. You look at the Supreme Court was disparaged every single day for years because of Kavanaugh and Amy Coney Barrett. And, okay, the, the White House and the executive branch, they accused of working with Russia. They sowed distrust, discord. They were the ones who were divisive because they had the biggest uh, megaphone. They had the biggest platform. Now, President Trump could have created, should have created a national dialogue. It was very difficult for him to do so because he was always being attacked by media. Every single day, from like Madonna made a statement that I can't even talk about because a lot of these things like they're hypocrites. They attack the institutions within government that they don't trust and they say, well, why don't you trust government? They didn't trust Pompeo or Trump or Mnuchin or uh, Stephen Miller or, oh my God, they vilified everyone next uh, uh, that was anywhere near trump they said people worked with russia when that wasn't true they impeached trump on the notion of investigating biden which now the federal government has been doing what since 2018 clinton ha has servers that she was obviously using to hide information from the entire planet they said it's not a big deal it was for convenience attorney general loretta lynch uh, meets with Bill Clinton. She said it was to, to speak about golf Brexit and grandchildren a couple days before Peter Strzok, who literally texted, we'll stop Trump, meets with Clinton. I mean, these people, everyone knows what's going on. James Comey is like, yeah, you know, I, I had to choose between bad and, and worse. It's like that was a cover-up. That's why he, he, he found classified intel on Anthony Weiner's laptop. There was classified, there was top secret and special access program outside of the United States government. That's even, I, I always use James Comey's own words. But of course, 57% uh, of Americans don't trust media. We know what's going on. 58% know that they're just trying to support a political ideology, which is the Democratic Party. If you don't have, look, Democrats don't run on ideas. Trump, to his credit, had a lot of great ideas, especially in terms of foreign policy. Now, there were missteps, but President Trump is a great president in terms of achievement. What they did to him and what he allowed them to do to, to President Trump allowed them to do what they did. Twitter, by the way, is the worst. I mean, the, the synthesis or the, the merging of cyberspace and journalism is a bad thing, really bad thing. You know, the fact that, I mean, you'll have a news story 
And then Twitter will allow extreme statements whenever it's leveled, they're, they're leveled against Trump, but not, oh my God, Twitter suspended the New York Post's account under the premise that um, Caligula, Biden's son's emails were hacked. They were never hacked. They made that up. They just, they, they blatantly make things up. And here, I mean, here's an example also. CNN today, I mean, CNN is like notorious. I mean, the Washington Post had to, um, to Lynn Wood's credit, he defeated the Washington Post in, with Nicholas Sandman. They went after the Washington Post for what they tried to do to a teenager. But you look, I mean, for years, how Trump fused his business empire to the presidency. Trump, you know, um, Trump business raked in, uh, you know, $1.9 billion. Uh, President Trump's 3,400 conflicts of interest. Oh, my God. And now you have an article, Trump has money problems. Donald Trump has a money problem. Well, which one is it? Overall, Trump's businesses produced almost 40% less in 2020 than 2019. Well, which one is it? Did he enrich himself from the presidency or did he lose money because of the presidency? They're always contradicting themselves every single day. And it's pretty obvious. Like, that's why, that's why you can see, like, the value... The, when I say like, the value system among liberals or media or Democrats, not all, but a great many, are, it's a malleable value system. Believe, believe when it suits them. Don't believe and scrutinize when it suits them. Conflicts of interest are bad with Trump. They're, not, they're just okay. And, you know, we checked it. And there's no big deal with Biden or Clinton. You know, I mean, the list goes on and on. You, you, they judge and condemn anyone. There's now this, you, you are now erased from the world and canceled from, from reality if in cyberspace you say something that people don't like, which is why I told you, delete your Twitter accounts. You don't need to be in a cyber reality. I, unless, you've, unless you're bored with actual reality, there's no reason to be in cyber reality. And even then, it's just a, it's a place full of endless pitfalls. President Trump found out he should never have insulted NFL players. He should never have insulted LeBron James. That is a huge, huge, uh, was a, a, a huge mistake. And also, <laughs> I mean, you have the, the distrusted media has led to, unfortunately, a trust in message boards. My God Almighty, if I hear one more time, you know, you should do more research and you don't know what's coming. You don't know what's around the corner. Well, we're coming back. We're coming back, baby. You don't know. There's so much going on. Oh, my God. We have them right where we want them. I mean, it's like unbelievable. Did you hear this in this other country and it's going to happen? You don't, You can just, like, there's enough. Noam Chomsky said this. I disagree with him on a lot. But he said this. And he said there's enough in, in terms of, and it's true, in Papers of record or, you know, publications of record or just in the New York Times, Washington Post, even CNN and MSNBC. There's enough there to point out not only massive hypocrisy, but to actually point to actually highlight illegal activity that's being covered up. There's enough. That's why when I read from Comey's own words, his press conference, like you can actually the information is there out in the open. My voice is important because I can just tell you, look, he stated there was top secret intelligence on private servers that Clinton was using. It's obviously not for convenience, so, and they covered that up. And then they went after Trump on a dossier that they purchased. This is all public record information. But see, that's why they don't trust, people don't trust media because media has one goal in mind, to elevate Democrats. One goal, that's it. It's not truth. That's why you couldn't talk about uh, Hunter's laptop. That's why you can't talk about things for the past couple of months. You just simply can't talk about it. Because then they make the, the leap of logic, well, those words led to the Capitol, but other words don't lead to what happened in Dallas in 20, uh, 15, 2016 or, um, um, what, a billion dollars in property damage the past six months, seven months, with, f what, 14,000 arrests, buildings set ablaze. I mean... There's a reason your favorite liberal progressive YouTube YouTubers didn't. Where were they? 
And during these protests, why didn't they take a camera and protest along? The, the people that make the most money, and I can, you have a list of names that I don't even want to get into, they make the most money off of talking about the suffering uh, of others. Didn't, they weren't, they didn't uh, protest. During, when Lady Gaga um, sang the national anthem, I didn't see Pelosi take a knee or Biden. Why not? Because they're, <laughs> the whole thing is a racket in media is a huge part of it. Give me your thoughts below. Hit subscribe right this second. This is an important segment, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be back in a couple of hours.